So I have a friend who is the owner of a Minecraft PvP clan. In fact, you guys might know this friend. His name is Ignacio Blades, and he's a prominent Hive YouTuber. The clan that he owns is Mystic Clan, which is kind of known as the biggest and the best clan on all of the Hive. Now I've always thought clan PvP is pretty intriguing, but I haven't really had a way to experience it all. I'm not really that good at PvP, but I still thought it would be cool to try and play in one. And so that's exactly what I did. I DM'd Ignacio asking if I could play in a scrim, and he was like, yeah, we'll stick you on our A team for a scrim and see how you like it, okay? And this is the story of how I joined a Minecraft PvP clan for a day. Enjoy. You're probably asking yourself, Potato, what are you doing? You're mediocre at PvP at best, why are you trying to play in a sweaty scrim? And the funny thing is, I didn't practice at all before this. I didn't really know any strats at all. I just kind of went in blind seeing what would happen. Now, one thing to note is that this wasn't an actual scrim. It didn't actually count for anything. It was just a practice game, and I think most of the reason of that was because I'm a really inexperienced player. I didn't really know what was going on. For all I knew, I was just playing Treasure Wars, but there were sweats in my game. The clan that we were going against is MP3 Clan, and from what I can tell, they're really good friends of Mystic Clan, and they knew that this was just for fun and didn't really mean anything. That didn't stop them from trying and taking it seriously, and we'll get into that later in the video. Now with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the games. We pretty much just joined the server, and I had no warm-up and essentially no idea what was going on. I can't actually show you guys the opening to this game, or any of the games for that matter, because they're secret strats that I was told to not leak. Wait, don't put this in your- this is our strategy! I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna leak our whole strategy. And it's kind of wild how these games played out. They don't play like normal Treasure Wars at all. In normal Treasure Wars games, you just rush mid or diamonds, and if there happen to be people there, you fight them, and that's how it is. In scrims, though, it's completely different. There's like fight cycles and everything where you're supposed to be at a certain place at a certain time to fight people, and if you're not, it's kind of how you lose, or at least lose ground, and that's really bad, losing ground in the scrims. And like, for example, if you lose mid, that's just free emeralds for the other team, and once they get emeralds, that's just diamond armor later in the game that you won't have. Now I guess I'll go ahead and put this out there for people that are in clans and do scrims and stuff like that. They might say that this stuff is common knowledge and that I should know this, but this is all new to me. I've never played in scrims before, I've just played Treasure Wars squads with my friends, and so it's really cool to learn about all this scrim stuff that I didn't know and see how advanced this game can actually get, so I just want to say that. that all this stuff was new to me, and it was really fun to learn. Oh yeah, I also forgot to say that my teammates for this scrim were Swimfan, Ignacio, and Sonic. You guys will know them if you know the Minecraft Bedrock Edition PvP scene at all, and if you don't, they're basically just some people that are really, really good at the game. Either way, I think fairly early on, my teammates noticed that I really had no idea what was going on. I was just kind of following what they said, and so what they did was they pretty much just stuck me on base duty, making sure that people didn't like rush from the sides, and just kind of protecting our treasure. Yo, potato pie, put a defense on our base. Okay. Put a defense. Uh, wood, I'm gonna uh, go, concrete, or what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mid. Uh, yeah, put like concrete, put, you know, put like the good stuff. Okay. Like wood, concrete, wood, concrete. Yep. Yeah. I'd go fight with them or follow them if they asked, but for the most part, they just figured it was safer if I just stayed on the island and I guess was contributing that way. Because for the most part in scrims, you usually have someone that stays on the island anyways just to defend from sneak attacks and stuff like that from the other clan. And I'm completely okay with this. I mean, pretty much my role was just kind of protect the treasure and call if a certain person in certain type of armor was rushing from what side or from mid or whatever like that. And honestly, it was still pretty fun. I obviously would have wanted to PvP more, but I mean, it was apparent that I was just getting destroyed and pretty much any fight that I tried to take one-on-one -on -one because these players are really, really good at the game. Well, sort of. It was found out fairly early on that one of the players on the other team, Young Lad, was actually auto-clicking, so that was pretty fun and we had to deal with that. There's one in mid right now, he's gonna be able to meet us. Young by the way. What did he say? Did he say Young Tacking? <laughs> Behind and off. Yeah. Yo, I'm trying to call the SS, bro. Get Delta. This guy, this guy cheats. I know, I know young cheats for a fact. So just get him SS, yeah, get a free dog. Yeah. But for the most part, we still were able to take care of him if we had multiple people go on him at once. We just kind of changed our playstyle a little bit to deal with him, calling out where he was at all times so that no one had to 1v1 him and risk losing when he was auto-clicking. We also tried to get him screen shared afterwards, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically where we install a program to check to see if there are cheats on the PC, but he refused, so he's just kind of now known as a cheater since he won't screen share, and basically we don't have any way to tell that he's not cheating, and it's fairly obvious that he was, so we're calling him a cheater now. That's pretty cool. Nice job, young lad. Good cheats. 
real talk, don't cheat in the game, especially in a practice game that doesn't even matter. You shouldn't cheat anyways, but like, imagine cheating in a practice game. It's not even like a real scrim and it doesn't like have any points or implications to it. Imagine cheating, period. Either way, enough of cheaters, no need to give them attention. There were a lot of things that were different from normal treasure wars. For example, for the most part, everyone used stone swords for the majority of the games until we got down to the end where most people had diamond armor. A lot of it was just rushing in, hoping to get a lucky break and possibly getting a treasure break, and if not, you died, and so there's really no need to invest in an iron sword or a diamond sword every time you rush, and that's why pretty much you only saw the diamond swords and diamond armor come out when you didn't have a treasure left. Well, I'm lying a little bit there by saying we didn't get diamond armor because we did get diamond armor before treasures were broken, but that was usually just buying one set and that was to do something called splitting. Yeah, potato pie. These are called splits. It's like, look at me, potato. This is huh? like a split. You know? Oh, okay. It's like cool. best split armor. It's like uh, one on right, iron on right, iron right. Basically, someone would buy one set of diamond armor and then split it with a teammate so that they'd be both slightly better than iron armor, but still not full diamond and wouldn't have to buy two diamond sets. This made it easier to win against people in iron armor because you just had better armor in general, and is honestly just a really good strategy that you wouldn't really think of if you just played normal treasure wars. One final thing that I learned is that snowballs aren't really used that much, but bows are, to an extent, because they're super high risk, high reward purchase. If you can hit your shots with a bow, it's really, really powerful just because that's how it is on the hive. But as you can also see in the video, there are a lot of bridges and a lot of ways to get knocked off the map, so if, like I said, if you can hit your shots, a bow is a really good investment. And from what I can tell, the reason why it's used over snowballs is because all the emeralds in the game pretty much just go to getting diamond armor because it makes you a juggernaut. Snowballs aren't as useful because because these guys can just combo you anyways if they want to. Either way, that's enough of me rambling about different things that I learned in scrims that are probably pretty common knowledge to most people that are pretty decent at PvP. I had an absolute blast playing in this practice scrim, I guess, so I'd like to give a huge shout out to Ignacio and just all of Mystic Clan for letting me do this. I really appreciate you guys. Also, big shout outs to my teammates Ignacio, SwimFan, and Sonic for putting up with me for an hour and a half because I essentially had no idea how to play, so big thanks thanks to you guys. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. I really love making these super high quality videos, so it would help me out a lot if you guys would do those things. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.